ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Hello, Clay. Oh, come on, let's have it, Warden. What the governor say? He turned down your appeal, Clay. There'll be no stay of execution. So you're gonna hang me Monday morning at 6 o'clock, huh? That was the sentence, and that's what we'll carry out. Well, get one thing straight, Warden. There ain't nobody gonna hang Clay Durfee. Boy, I'll be out of here before you even buy the rope. Why don't you make peace with yourself? You've been convicted of every crime from murder on down. And there's been no new evidence to contradict the facts. That's right, because they're all true, that's why. But you forget one thing, Warden. I'm not the only one that was guilty. I'm just the only one that was caught. And I still got friends on the outside. If you mean your brother Stark, I wouldn't count on him. There are men out looking for him and his gang right now. And sooner or later, they'll be caught. Yeah, but don't you count on it, Warden. The law ain't big enough to catch up with the Durfee brothers and their gang. The law is always big enough, Clay. Yeah, you'll see. My brother will get me out of this somehow. I know he will. Why, well, he's working on it right now. How long ago did this paper reach town? A couple hours ago. I grabbed a cup of it as soon as I saw it. That's rough, Stark. Looks like old Clay's gonna hang on schedule. Shut up! You think I'm gonna let my brother die? What can you do? The governor's turned down his appeal. The governor? Who does he think he is anyway? No Durfee is gonna hang by his neck. We're getting Clay out of there. We got a good big gang, Stark. But it ain't big enough to break down the wall at the state prison. You think I don't know that? I've been figuring it out ever since Clay was sentenced. We still got three days before the hanging. That's all we need. I don't get you, Stark. How are we going to bust Clay out of that prison? We're not going to do it. We're going to let the governor do it for us. The governor? Have you gone loco? Don't you two hoodlums ever read the Bible? Didn't you ever hear of an eye for an eye? Talk sense, will you, Stark? If Clay dies, the governor's going to lose a member of his family. And I don't think he'll want that to happen. If you're talking about the governor's daughter, you can forget it. She's not even here now. I read where she and her aunt was up north visiting relatives. You didn't read far enough, Blue. He's due back in town on the next stage. That give you any ideas? Does it? Man Blue can stop that coach long before it reaches town. Well, don't stand there talking about it. Do it. And remember, I want those two females alive. I'm counting on them to give me mighty fine bargaining power with the governor. Look! Must be some of Stark Durfee's men. Come on. Man's sakes, Ruth. If I had any idea we'd be waylaid by outlaws and bounced black and blue, I'd never have taken you north to visit Brother Dane. Hold up! I'm afraid he can't hear you, Aunt Addie. And even if he could, I wouldn't want him to slow up. Those outlaws are gaining on us. Well, they can't hold us up. Don't they know who we are? I'm afraid it wouldn't make much difference to them that we're the governor's relatives. That's what it is. If this is the best protection your father can give us, I'm going to vote for a new governor. I'm afraid you can't hold Dad responsible for every bandit that chooses to rob us. <laughs> driver, driver, slow up, I say. Oh, I don't care if those bandits shoot us. I want to get out. Good gracious, he's gone. What do you mean he's gone? I tell you, there's no one up there. Howard running away like that. He must have been shot. Oh, Andy, what'll we do? Are you 
ladies all right? I think so. Kimasami, driver dead. Oh, my, the poor man. Young man, you can rob me of every penny I've got, and I won't mind a bit. I'm too grateful to you for stopping that infernal vehicle. We have no intentions of robbing you two ladies. We are after those two outlaws. That's strange talk from a man wearing a mask. Are you trying to tell us that you're not an outlaw? I'm as much against them as you are, miss. My mask is a symbol of that. I see. Aunt Addie, if the driver's dead, then how will we get home? Oh, well, Father will be so worried if we don't arrive on time. Worried is hardly the word for it. He'll probably send for the militia. Could you possibly drive us to the state capitol? My father's the governor. He'll make it worth your while. The governor? I know that explains a lot. Do you think that reason why outlaws chase stagecoach? What mumbo-jumbo are you two talking? I guess you haven't heard the latest news, ma'am. The governor just refused a stay of execution to Clay Durfee. What's that got to do with us? You not hear of Durfee brothers? When Clay captured, Stark swear to set him free. And now that Clay's time is running out, Stark will stop at nothing to save him. Even if it means taking the governor's daughter as hostage. He wouldn't dare. I'm afraid he would, ma'am. Tyler and I have been on their trail for quite a while. They'd dare anything. We captured Durfee Ryder in town today. Him have message for governor. It say an eye for an eye. If Clay die, your daughter die too. That shows how sure they were of capturing you. That means they'll probably try again. Yes, you can count on it, miss. Those two outlaws won't waste any time reporting to Stark if their plan has failed. They'll be quick to think up another. Then get us to the state capitol while we're still in one piece. In this coach, ma'am, why every member of Durfee's gang will be watching out for it. Then what do we do? Tano, doesn't that old Mexican friend of ours, Jose Maranga, live somewhere near here? That's right. Him have cabin not far off road. Young man. Don't be alarmed, Miss Standish. I only want to borrow some clothes for you. Clothes? And what's wrong with the ones we're wearing? Why, nothing, ma'am. Except they're the kind of stock would expect the governor's relatives to wear. Aunt Addie, don't argue. We've got to do as they say. Very well. How do we get there? Walk? That would be rather slow, ma'am, and we don't have saddles for the coach horses. Then what do we do? Haven't you ladies ever ridden two on a horse? Just a minute, young man. Well, you're not worrying. Nothing get hurt but your dignity. Then we better get there in a hurry. There's no time to waste. A child could have done better than you two blundering idiots. Well, that masked man and engine was far and too close for comfort. Besides, we didn't know if there wasn't others riding with him. So you turned and ran. When I give orders to pick up two helpless women, I expect you to do it against a whole army of masked men and Indians. Yeah, well, maybe if you'd been riding with us, you'd feel different about things, Stark. That masked man's been on our trail before. And from what I've heard about him, I'm not any too anxious to meet up with him. I'm scared to death. From now on, I am riding with you. My brother's life depends on my getting a hold of those two women. We're not coming back without him. Too late, Stark. We shot the driver, and the stagecoach was headed for kingdom come. Yeah, well, the governor don't know that. All I need is the body of either one of those women. And he'll listen to reason. Come on. This coach was headed for kingdom come, huh? The masked man and engine must have stopped us. Did you figure that out all by yourself, Blue? Now suppose you tell us where they're gone. Well, they couldn't have got far, Stark. They didn't stop to unhitch the nags. That means they rode off two on a horse. Should we round up the gang and go after them? You know the gang's busy. Well, if they're riding double, they can't be traveling fast. Yeah, but which direction? Toward the state capital, of course. That's the only place they can feel safe, and they know it. This is wonderful, senor. You look like my Jose Miranga in his power that I do myself. I hope we don't get you into any trouble by doing this, Jose. It's a pleasure to risk the trouble for the men who won't help me out of trouble. If you ask me, this whole thing is utter nonsense. I feel like a perfect scarecrow. What's worse, Aunt Addy, you look like one. <laughs> for your protection, Miss Standish, Stark and his men will be watching for two well-dressed ladies traveling in style. I'm not likely to suspect poor Mexicans on way to state capital. I only hope you're right, Tano. You'll take good care of Silver and Scott, won't you, Jose? Don't worry, my friend. I will let them buy the back trails to town, and I'll meet you there. Then we'll be on our way. And don't forget, Miss Standish, if we meet anyone, let me do the talking. The less English the rest of you know, the better. You needn't worry about me, young man. I never talk to strangers on public roads. Up you go. Cheer up, Aunt Hattie. I think it's all rather exciting. Who'd ever thought we'd have an adventure like this? Thanks again, Jose. Bye, Uncle Dios. Good luck to you. And may the road be smooth for you. 
Adiós. Adiós, amigo. Gira, gira. How do you know until we get a closer look? Can't you see there's nothing but a bunch of Mexicans in it? Yeah, but they got eyes, ain't they? Makes me seen the two females we're after. Call it, you. Si, si, senor. What is it you want with me? I just want to look over the cargo you're carrying. Si. Hey. Who are you, anyway? You have not heard of Jose Morango and his family? His son Carlos, his daughter Maria, and his beautiful wife, Dolores. His beautiful wife, huh? She looks like a cross between a prune and a fig to me. <laughs> you make me the insult, senor. The wife of Jose Morango has got to be called names. Shut up, yo. See? Your family, huh? How long you been on the road? Oh, we've been on the road all day, senor. I'm asking him. What's the matter with you? Can't you talk? Si, si, senor. Me talk. Me talk. So one of these Mexicans wouldn't learn our language. Is that all you can say, old woman, is me talk? Larquense, feros mestizos bajos. Y se enan pasa la gente irrespetable. Si yo fuera hombre, les rompería todos los dientes. Fuera, cobarte, vianos, alcahuete. I don't know what she said, Stark, but she sure told you all. How about it, Stark? Are you satisfied they ain't hiding the governor's daughter under them blankets? Have you seen any travelers go through here in the last couple of hours? Travelers? No comprende. A couple of well-dressed women with a masked man and an Indian, maybe. Queen and masked man Indian? Oh, say, only see the people in this wagon. Come on, Stark. He can't tell us anything. All right, go ahead. But forget you ran into us. Understand? Si, senor. Jose, understand. Jose, do what you say. <laughs> I didn't know you could speak Spanish, Aunt Addie. When I get riled enough, I can do almost anything. Glad you can, Miss Standish. You were the most convincing actor of all of us. We'll be on our way. Tell me that masked man and Indian was riding a white stallion in Pinto. Well, what do you know? That's their horses, all right. Well, how do you figure that? Why would that Mexican be taking them by the back way into town? Another Mexican. All of a sudden, the woods are full of them. You know, boys, I think we've just been played for fools. What do you mean, Stark? Come on, I'll show you. Hello there. Say, aren't you my old friend, Jose Moringa? Si, senor, that is me. My memory must be bad. We have met somewhere before. Gee, si, about an hour ago. You forget so soon? Take him, boys. Oh, no, por qué? We take the animal.
enemy by surprise. What do we do with them, Stark? They've been begging for trouble. Now they're going to get it. I'll give them a taste of this. Get out there! Look! Get them away! After them, quick! How do you feel, Tara? Right clock ticking in head. Where are you? The looks of those tracks, it must have rolled away in a hurry. That plenty bad, them have ladies far off by now. There's no way we can follow them. Seems strange how them outsmart us. We thought we had them fooled for sure. We did fool them, Tonto. Something else must have gone wrong. It sounds like silver. Come on. So this is how they found out. We know where Stark's hideout is. They must have taken the ladies there. Oh, uh, gracias. Uh, <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. A couple of females in a wagon trying to outrun our horses. Well, they almost did. You caught up with us, young man, but sooner or later the law will catch up with you. Yeah, you think so? Well, I ain't gonna hold my bet till they do. Here, sign this. What does it say, Ruth? It's to Dad. It says we're being held as hostages, and we won't be released until Clay Durfee is pardoned and shows up at this hideout. I won't sign this. No? Take old sour puss in the back room there. Let her feel the whip. Maybe that'll make Miss Tandish feel more like signing. Come on. <laughs> oh, wait. You win. Good. Now, so your father will know this isn't forged. I'll take that ring you're wearing. Hey, Blue. Get this into town as fast as you can. But don't come back without Clay. But supposing I don't get in to see the governor. Are you loco? This ring will get you in anywhere. Well, make yourself comfortable, ladies. We shouldn't have to wait too long. My father will do a lot to save us, Mr. Durfee. But I wouldn't count on his releasing your brother. He doesn't make deals with outlaws. He will this time. Hey, Doug, get some grub ready. I'll take over here for a while. Better keep an eye on them females, Stark. They can be mighty tricky when they want to be. You trying to tell me how to handle a couple of helpless females? Don't make noise. Go. Tie and gag him, Tom. I'll go on ahead. takes more than a blustering bully to spoil my appetite. Hold your talk, ma'am, or I'll put another hole in your head beside your mouth. My pistol is aimed right at Miss Standish's heart. I'm not afraid to shoot. You with the mask on, come in. Drop those guns. If your gun goes off, so will mine. I'll give you exactly three seconds to get in here. Or I'll fire anyway. Now drop those guns. Or do I have to shoot Miss Standish to prove that I mean business? Now stand right where you are. You don't know when you're well off, do you, mister? I almost killed you once today. You come right back for more. Well, I'm not going to disappoint you. Please, Mr. Durfee, no more shooting. I, I, I feel so faint. I, uh... Aunt Addie! 
So it takes more than a blustering bully to scare her, huh? Stupid old crow, she's lucky she passed out. She won't have to watch me put a bullet in you. And that's exactly what I aim to do unless you tell me where your engine pal is. You'd kill me as soon as I did, Stark. You're right, I would. Let's not waste each other's time. <laughs> Down, Kimasabi? Yes, Tano. Three down. You needn't worry anymore, ladies. Jose will see that you get safely into town. Si, senorita. You bet you my life I will. Are you sure you can't ride in with us? I'm afraid not, Miss Ruth. Tano and I are going to help round up the rest of the Durfee gang. You tell Governor him not worry. All Durfee gang be behind bars soon. Young man, any time you need help again to capture an outlaw, just call on me. I'll remember. Adios. Adios. And, Daddy, what a wonderful adventure. I'll bet Dad will never believe us. He'll have to believe us when he sees our prisoners. Lady, there's only one thing I want to know. Who is that hombre with the mask? Reckon you'll never forget him, mister. He's the Lone Ranger. Hello, Silver! Hello! 